Hi guys, this is C.A. Balakrishna. In this video, we will be revising SEBI Act. Previously, we have completed SEBI LODR regulations. Now, we will be starting with SEBI. First of all, what is the objective of implementing this SEBI? There are mainly two objectives. The first objective is to protect the interest of investors who are investing in the stock markets. And the second objective would be to promote the development and regulation of securities market that means to see that more and more people participate in these securities markets these are the two main objectives of securities exchange board of india now section 3 establishment of sebi basically sebi will be established in the form of a body corporate having perpetual succession and a common seal and sebi will be having the power to acquire the properties and power to sell the properties which are in the name of SEBI and SEBI can file a sue, suit against third party and third party can file a suit against SEBI okay it can be sued and it can also sue and the head office of the SEBI will be present in Mumbai okay moving to section number four management of board see in this SEBI act wherever you find the term board it means SEBI okay it doesn't mean board of directors in the sebi act board means sebi now management of board who will be present in this sebi first of all there will be a chairman who will be appointed by central government and there will be two members who will be from officers from the ministry of central government and one member from rbi and five other members who will be nominated by central government of these five members at least three must be whole time members these are the people or these are the members who will be present in the board now term of office of these uh, these members not exceeding five years as specified in the appointment order and they can be appointed to the sebi up to maximum age of 65 years okay that would be the term of the office now termination whether central government can, can terminate these chairmen and members who are appointed by the central government yes central government can terminate by giving notice of not less than three months or three months salary and allowance okay by giving any of these that uh, the central government can terminate the chairman or members appointed by central government hope that is clear now what will be the grounds on which central government can terminate there are uh, four grounds first one is such chairman or member has become insolvent or he has become unsound mind or he has been convicted of an offense involving moral turpitude or he has abused his position in such a way that his continuance would be detrimental to the public interest okay these are the four instances in which the member or the chairman can be terminated by the central government now relinquishment that means whether the chairman himself or whether the member himself can resign his office yes they can resign by giving notice of three months to the central government in writing okay section 7 meetings of the board okay at what time and how many meetings and at which place the meetings should be conducted will be decided as specified in the regulations those are not applicable to us now what is applicable uh, in sebi is if the chairman of the sebi is not present in the meeting then the person who is elected by all other members will act as chairman of the uh, you know for such particular meeting of sebi okay and in this in such meeting any decision will be deemed to be approved if it is approved by majority of members present at such meeting and a casting vote will be given to the chairman that means in case decision regarding any matter has been tied in that case an extra vote or a second vote will be given to the chairman hope that is clear next members not to participate in meeting when if such member is director of a company and as a director he is having pecuniary interest in the matter coming for the discussion okay a particular matter relating to some company has come to the sebi now in such company the member of sebi is director 
and he is having pecuniary interest in such company in that case while deciding such matter relating to such company this member should not present in the meeting hope that is clear next vacancy shall not invalidate proceedings of the board hope that is fine moving to section number 11 powers and functions of the board if you see the basic duties which we have already discussed that is protection of interest of investors and promote development of and regulation of stock markets now if you see to perform these duties the sebi can register and regulate all intermediaries of financial markets that means stock brokers sub brokers credit rating agencies underwriters all these types of uh, financial intermediaries which will participate in the stock market transactions can be registered by the sebi okay these people must get themselves registered with the sebi okay next sebi can prohibit fraudulent and unfair trade practices in the stock market and sebi can promote investor education and it can prohibit insider trading also it can regulate substantial acquisition of shares that means see the company is being managed by board of directors its shares are listed in the stock market okay the management is different from owners of the company now if any person holds more number of shares then such a person will be having substantial right okay majority uh, holding of the company now since the shares of the company are traded in the stock market what any person can do is he can start buying the shares of the company in large quantities in such a way that he becomes the majority shareholder of the company thereby taking over the management of the company itself thereby to prevent this, this uh, types of substantial takeovers what sebi can do is sebi can put a limit okay maximum limit up to which shares can be bought a, by a particular individual from the stock market okay it can put a limit on the maximum shares uh, that a particular individual can buy from the stock market relating to a particular company okay this would be known as prohibiting substantial takeovers it can frame regulations to prohibit this type of substantial takeover of shares next calling for information now for performing these actions what are the powers that the sebi is having sebi is having all the powers that a civil court has as per code of criminal uh, code of civil procedures what are they first one discovery and production of books examining and oath summoning and enforcing attendance inspection of books and issue commission for examination of witness or uh, of documents these powers you would have you know read them in various chapters which are the powers of a civil court even having with sebi also next orders that sebi can pass what are the type of orders that the sebi can pass during or on completion of investigation or inquiry let us see the first order is sebi can suspend trading of securities from the stock market this is one type of order that the sebi can pass or restrain any person from accessing the securities market okay it can uh, it can say that this particular person mr a cannot participate in the stock market because he is committed uh, he has committed some fraud or an investigation is being carried on against him or whatever the reason might be sebi can restrain particular person from uh, you know accessing the stock markets even such type of order can be passed by the sebi or suspend any office bearer or impound and retain proceeds securities in respect of any transaction under investigation okay if if there is any transaction that is being investigated by sebi then the securities that are involved in such transaction and the amount that is involved in such transaction can be impounded and retained by the sebi hope that is clear 
नैक्स्ट से कैन आलो अटैच बैंक अकौंटस और प्रापर्टीस फर् मैक्सीम पीरियड आफ् नाट एक्सी नई डेस् अंड डक्ट नाट टू डिस्पोज एनी असैट फार्मिंग पार्ट आफ् इनवेटिगेशन दीज आर दाइप आफ् आर्डर्स दट से कैन पास नौ से नंबर लवेन ए prohibition to issue prospectus see whenever a company wants to raise money from the public first of all to issue the shares it will have to give a prospectus or a offer document now sebi can by framing some regulations it can restrict some companies from issuing the this offer document or prospectus let us see board may by regulation prohibit any company from issuing uh, prospectus or specify conditions subject to which prospectus can be issued it can say that these companies cannot issue prospectus that means they cannot raise money from public or they can raise money from public that is they can issue prospectus for raising money from public subject to satisfaction of some conditions okay these types of conditions might be uh, you know specified by the sebi through regulations next section number 11 collective investment scheme see first of all basically sebi wants to regulate this uh, collective investment scheme first of all we will see which types of schemes will be known as collective investment schemes for a scheme to be known as collective investment scheme it must satisfy the following conditions first one contributions to payments received from the investors okay this scheme must receive payments from the investors okay receipts from the investor now this receipts must be given to the scheme by investors with an intention to make profits out of the amount invested okay now this amount which has been collected from the investors will be invested by this scheme that is uh, cis in various other investments so as to generate profits okay and the investments of the scheme are managed on behalf of investors okay this cis will manage the investments that it has made on behalf of the investors and investors do not have control over day to day management of the scheme and any other scheme that is specified by the sebi through regulations will also be known as cis hope that is clear now these are the conditions that must be satisfied for a particular scheme to be known as collective investment scheme okay now there are certain exclusions from collective investment scheme that means even though these following schemes are having characteristics of a uh, of a uh, as prescribed above those schemes will not be known as collective investment schemes why basically the intention of sebi defining this collective investment scheme is to regulate the collective investment schemes all the schemes which fall under the definition of this collective investment scheme will be regulated by sebi but for the schemes which are excluded from collective investment schemes there are separate acts that regulate these schemes thereby sebi has excluded these schemes which are having separate acts from this collective investment scheme definition let us see what are those schemes excluded from cis schemes frame, framed by cooperative societies for those schemes there is separate act known as cooperative societies act thereby sebi need not govern those schemes next deposits which are accepted by nbfcs for uh, for nbfcs there is rbi and contract of insurance there is irida and for scheme framed under epf act there is a separate act for a pension fund sorry provident fund next deposits accepted under companies act will be dealt by companies act deposits accepted by nidhis mutual benefit society will also be dealt by companies act there is a separate chapter relating to that next chit fund business will be dealt by chit fund act mutual funds will however be governed by sebi only there is no particular need again to include this mutual fund in the definition of cis and again to regulate because already mutual funds are however regulated by sebi next such other schemes as may be specified okay these are exclusions from collective investment scheme next power to levy penalties see sebi can in the interest of investors or to secure proper management of any of the financial intermediary 
इट कैन इश्यू सच डायरेक्शन और लेवी पेनाल्टीज अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टीन ए टू फिफ्टीन एच बी फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन ए टू फिफ्टीन एच बी देर इज ए लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ पेनाल्टीज प्रिस्क्राइब अंडर सेबी ओके दीज पेनाल्टीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस पेनाल्टीज डायरेक्टली सम क्वेश्चन कैन कम इन द एग्जामिनेशन हाउ एवर those in the in those penalties there will be nothing to be explained you have to by heart those penalties so i am not going to revise those penalties here next section number 11c investigation under investigation on intermediaries or any person first of all sebi can initiate a investigation on financial intermediaries what are the grounds in which case sebi can initiate this investigation first one transactions are detrimental to the interest of investors or any of the financial intermediary has violated the provisions of this act if any of these two grounds exist then sebi can initiate investigation against such a financial intermediary now once sebi has initiated uh, this investigation an investigating authority will be appointed now such a intermediary shall furnish books or documents records and all the registers and documents which are required for the purpose of investigation to the investigating authority now these books or documents can be retained by the investigating authority for a period of 6 months okay after completion of 6 months they have to be returned to such a particular person however if investigating authority again wants these books he can again call back them if needed okay now if any person fails or refuses to produce documents or information that are requested by investigation authority or appear before investigation authority or sign notes of examination then an imprisonment and also penalty will be levied on him imprisonment may extend up to 1 year fine may extend up to 1 crore or both and also further fine of, of up to 5 lakh per day till the time the default continues okay this is the penalty that would be levied next impounding of documents see if the investigating officer during conducting the investigation has reason to believe that such particular person might destroy mutilate falsify alter or secret the documents or books or registers then what he can do is he can make application to magistrate or judge asking for an order of seizure okay the investigating authority can approach the magistrate or judge asking that this person might destroy mutilate alter falsify or secret the documents or the you know books thereby you please pass an order of seizure of those books documents or records okay now what type of order such authority can pass it can say that enter the place where books are kept and search the place and seize the books okay this order can be passed next section number 11d seize and desist order seize and desist means to stop the activity okay an order to stop particular activity now to pass such order there must be two conditions satisfied first one condition one after inquiry board finds that that means first of all board must conduct a inquiry board means sebi next after inquiry board finds that person has violated or is likely to violate any of the provisions of this act these are the two conditions that must be satisfied to pass an order of seize and desist now in respect of listed entities or any entity which is intending to get get its shares listed on the stock, uh, stock market seize and desist order can be passed against this type of entities only if see seize and desist order can be passed only if reason to believe that company has indulged in insider trading or market manipulation okay so we can pass a cease and desist order against a listed entity or any entity that is going to list its shares on the stock market only if sebi has reason to believe that such entity is involved in insider trading or market manipulation hope that is clear next section number 12 registration of stock brokers sub brokers and all other financial intermediaries all those financial intermediaries must get registered with the sebi okay manner of application will be as determined in the regulations section number 12a prohibition of certain activities see what are those activities no person shall use manipulative or deceptive devices in dealing with stock market okay 
no person shall engage in insider trading no person shall defraud commit any fraud in connection with issue of securities and no person shall substan substantially acquire any of the shares or control from the stock market hope that is clear these are the activities that cannot be performed by people who are dealing in the stock markets next section 14 a fund known as SEBI fund can be established by the SEBI. What are the credits that can be created to this fund and what are the debits that can be made to this fund? First of all, credits. All the grants received from the central government, all the fees collected by the SEBI or all the charges such other sums as may be prescribed by the central government will be credited to this SEBI fund. And the debits, what are the expenses? Salaries or allowances of members and employees of the board. Okay, all those salaries will salaries of this SEBI, uh, employees of the SEBI will be paid from the SEBI fund, and expenses of board in discharge of its functions will be expended from this SEBI fund only. Okay. Next, section number fifteen. As per section number fifteen, SEBI must prepare annual financial statements and conduct its annual financial statements audited by CNDG and forward the audit report along with the audited financial statements to central government okay from section number 15a to 15 hp there are penalties that you can go through next section number 15j factors to be taken into account while adjudging quantum of penalty see while deciding the amount of penalty that can be levied for a particular type of offense what are the factors that must be taken into account first one amount of disproportionate gain or unfair advantage that the person who is committing the offense has gained okay through committing such offense what is the amount of you know gain that this person has made out of such offense and amount of loss caused to the investors okay due to committing of this offense what is the loss that the investors have occurred and what is the repetitive nature of this default how many times this person has conducted this type of offense based on all these three factors the amount of penalty should be decided next penalties realized shall be credited to consolidated fund of india okay penalties that have been collected by sebi will not be credited to sebi fund these penalties will be credited to consolidated fund of india next 15 jb administrative and civil proceedings can be settled with the sebi okay <sighs> All the administrative and civil proceedings can approach the SEBI for settlement. Okay. Next, settlement once the the proceeding, the offence which is of civil or administrative nature is settled with the SEBI. Once the SEBI has given such settlement order, the person cannot file an appeal against the settlement order. Okay. Settlement order is not appealable. Okay. Now, settlement amount will be created to consolidated fund of India. Okay. Let's say, as per originally, the penalty levied for committing uh, certain type of offences, let's say, 10 crore. Now, by entering into settlement with SEBI, this amount has been reduced to 5 crore. Okay. This would be known as settlement order. Now, this type of settlement order is not appealable. And also, the settlement amount that has been received will be created to Consolidated Fund of India. Okay. Next, Security Supply Tribunal. Who will be there in this Security Supply Tribunal? First of all, there will be a preceding officer, a judicial member and technical member. What is the qualification of a preceding officer? Okay. If you want to appoint any person as a preceding officer of Security Supply Tribunal, what are the qualifications that this preceding officer must possess? See, he is or has been Judge of Supreme Court or Chief Justice of High Court or Judge of High Court for at least 7 years. Okay, Any of these three qualifications must be possessed by a person if you want to appoint him as preceding officer of Security Supply Tribunal. Okay, Judicial member is or has been judge of high court for at least five years okay this is the qualification that must be possessed by a person whom you want to appoint as a judicial member next technical member if you want to appoint any person as a technical member he is or has been secretary or additional secretary in ministry or department of central government or state government or he is a person having professional experience of not less than 15 years in financial sector including securities market okay these are the qualifications 
that a person whom you want to appoint as a technical member of SAT must possess. Now, these two people are there now, preceding officer, judicial member. They will be appointed by central government in consultation with Chief Justice of India or his nominee. Okay. Whereas, technical member will be appointed by central government on recommendation of search come selection committee now who will be present in this search come selection committee first of all in this search come selection committee preceding officer of security supply tribunal will be acting as a chairperson okay and secretary of department of economic affairs will be acting as a member and he will also act as a convener of meetings of this search come selection committee and secretary who is a of department of financial services will also be member and secretary legislative department or secretary department of legal affairs any of these two secretaries will also be member of this search come selection committee hope that is clear now what is the tenure of this preceding officer technical member judicial member it is five years however after completion of five years they can again be reappointed for a maximum of five years and the age limit is maximum of 70 years if at all there is any vacancy in office of preceding officer, uh, technical member or judicial member, it will be filled by central government. Resignation. Yes, the preceding officer and the members can resign by giving notice to central government and continue to hold office till earlier of the following. See, after giving notice of resignation to the central government, they must continue to hold the office till any of the following events occur. Okay, earlier of following three events, what are they? expiry of three months from the date of giving of notice or any person has been appointed by the central government to replace this person or expiry of his term okay till the time any of these three events occur the person who has submitted a resignation letter must continue to hold his office okay next removal of preceding officer uh, technical member judicial member in following cases they will be removed if they are adjudged as insolvent or they are physically or mentally incapable or convicted of any offence involving moral turpitude or he has abused his position and after abusing his position continuing him in his office would be detrimental to the public interest even in such case also the member will be the member or the preceding officer will be removed by the central government or has become financially interested in any matter okay in these five cases such person will be removed next appeal to security supply tribunal against which types of orders the appeal can be filed with the security supply tribunal see against order passed by SEBI or against order passed by adjudicating authority or against order passed by IRDA that means insurance regulatory and development authority or pension fund regulatory and development authority that means even for the orders passed by these two authorities the appeal can be filed with the security appellate tribunal only hope that is clear next time period what is the maximum time within which the appeal has to be filed it is 45 days from the date of order however security appellate tribunal feels that the person is prevented from filing the appeal for the proper reason then it can condone the delay okay now appeal shall be disposed of by the sat within six months from the date of receipt of the appeal okay next SAT has all the powers of civil court under code of civil procedure and all proceedings deemed to be judicial proceedings. That means all the proceedings that are conducted in the SAT will be deemed that such proceedings are conducted in a court. Okay, that is the meaning of judicial proceedings. Next, SAT operates through constitution of benches. See, what the security supply tribunal will do is it will constitute its benches in various locations and it will appoint the required number of technical and judicial members to each of those mem uh, those benches as per the requirement hope so that is clear and the cases will be solved or cases will be trialed by those benches next if at all there is difference of opinion let's say there is particular bench in this particular bench there are two members now there is a difference of opinion be between these two members then what they will do is they will write down what are the differences of opinion and they will forward these differences to preceding officer now the preceding officer will either himself uh, you know 
read over the differences and will make a decision or will forward these differences to some other person that is some other member and will ask such member to go through those you know matters and come to decision now the decision final decision will be taken on these points based on majority voting of these two members and also this third member okay now that that particular matter will be decided based on majority of these three people hope that is clear refer to preceding officer now person aggrieved by order of security supply tribunal can make appeal to supreme court within how many days within 60 days however supreme court can grant an extension of up to further 60 days if at all there is any delay in filing the you know appeal next central government to supersede the board that means central government to take over the board take over the powers of board when board is unable to discharge the functions and duties or board has defaulted to comply with the directions issued by the board or provisions of this act okay or in the public interest in these three cases the central government will supersede the board what is the effect of supersession of board once the central government supersedes the board all members shall vacate the office and all powers of board will be exercised by such a person appointed by central government and all the properties of the board will be vested with the central government these are the three effects of passing an order of supersession now after period of supersession central government will again reconstitute the board okay will again appoint the fresh members to the board however while appointing the fresh members to the board central government can appoint a member who has been removed earlier hope that is clear see vacated member can also be reappointed at the time of this reconstitution of board hope that is clear next section number 18 board shall within 90 days from the end of financial year submit a report of all its activities to the central government okay now members of officers employees of board and preceding officer members of sat shall be public servants that means they will be government employees okay criminal offenses which are punishable see basically in case of civil offenses settlement can be entered in case of criminal offenses compounding of offenses can be taken place now which types of criminal offenses can be compoundable the offenses which are punishable with imprisonment only or with imprisonment and fine only these two types of offenses can be compounded now special courts special courts are established under sebi exclusively to deal with criminal offenses okay now who will be there in the special court single judge appointed by central government in consultation with chief justice of high court okay. now qualification what are his qualifications the person immediately before appointing him as a judge of this special court must be holding office as session judge or additional session judge hope that is clear now there will be separate special court for each area now let's say for particular area there are two special courts in such case which special court will trial the offense the special court which is specified by the high court of such jurisdiction will trial the offense hope that is clear now any appeal against the special court can be filed with high court and the code of criminal procedure will be applicable for proceedings before special court okay by this i have completed almost 90 percent of revision of sebi uh, the penalties i have not revised and there are some miscellaneous provisions that i have not uh, you know revised apart from those almost entire sebi act has been revised